and welcome to this Vue integration tutorial. Vue now supports the automatic creation of materials for Redshift when converting assets or entire scenes from Vue. In this video, we will look at how to convert objects from Vue into Redshift objects in Cinema 4D. To use this new feature, you will need Redshift 3.0.46 or up with the new OpenColor IO color management and Cinema 4D R23 or up. Here I am in Cinema 4D, and as a preparation for this tutorial, I added a camera, a Redshift dome light with a sky HDRI that I exported from view before, and a Redshift volume object with a bit of fog and haze, so that we have some atmospheric elements in the scene when rendering it later. But of course, this is not mandatory, and it can also be done at the very end. I also opened the scene that I created in view with the integration plugin here inside of Cinema 4D. Now, to convert the scene to Redshift, you need to set the render engine to Redshift so that the view plugin knows for which renderer to create materials during the conversion process. Then, open View's world browser and select everything you would like to convert. In this case, I'm going to convert the terrain with an attached ecosystem. Next, right-click on any of the selected objects and choose Convert to Cinema 4D object. In the Conversion dialog, you can choose between different material conversion methods. Please note that when you have multiple objects selected, these options will be applied to all selected objects. So for individual conversion settings per object, you would need to convert them separately. Now, if your object has a procedural material that was built with you or Plant Factory noises and nodes, choose Bake to Texture Maps to bake the procedural channels into bitmaps. You can choose which channels to bake in the list below. When you have a hybrid material that uses both bitmaps and procedural channels, we also recommend the baking option. But if your object only uses bitmap-based materials, you can choose Convert Materials. This will simply dump all of the existing image files into the project path defined here, and it will not rebake the textures. A special feature for the Redshift conversion is the use of the Redshift Sprite node, which can be used instead of an alpha channel. The Sprite node renders tremendously faster with many overlapping alpha channels, which for example happens on plants with many leaves. It has, however, a few limitations, which are described in Redshift's official documentation, and it can only be used once in an entire material. So there might be certain material scenarios where a traditional alpha channel might be the better choice. But in general, we recommend using the sprite node for best rendering performance. You can also choose the type of native instances created for ecosystems inside of Cinema 4D. And multi-instances are the option that offer the best viewport and memory performance. Depending on the way you did set up your ecosystem instances when creating the ecosystem inside of Vue, you can also include animation with a bone rig or a point cloud in the converted object. Once everything is set up, click Convert. The conversion can take a few minutes depending on how many objects you convert and how many different materials they have, but generally speaking, it's quite fast. After the conversion is done, the converted objects are placed on a new layer inside of the world browser and they are hidden from render. In case you would want to make any changes to an already converted object, you can always revert it with a right click and then you can edit it and then you can reconvert. But if you don't need any more changes, you can now close the view scene because it is no longer needed. All the objects are now native Cinema 4D objects with properly set up Redshift material node graphs. So if we're going to look at one of the node graphs here, we see that we have included sub-properties such as backlight and translucency, or support for two-sided materials and all the other material properties. So now all that's left to do is pressing render and getting the scene rendered by Redshift. Now here's an additional tip. When converting large-scale scenes with several thousand instances, it might happen that Redshift runs out of VRAM and refuses to render, or that rendering might be very slow, even when using materials with the sprite node. To avoid this, you should export the mesh that was just created as a Redshift proxy. 
because Redshift saves the position of the mesh inside of the proxy file, the mesh needs to be centered at the world origin before exporting it. If you do not center it, you will get floating instances after importing the Redshift proxy object into the ecosystem. So for this, I'm just going to create a copy of my mesh, and then I'll center it at world origin at 000. Now I can go to File, Export, and Redshift Proxy. And by checking Add Proxy to Scene, the proxy object will be imported into the scene immediately after saving. Now I can delete the duplicated mesh and set the original mesh to be hidden from render. And then I can drag and drop the proxy file into the instance object. By replacing the original meshes one by one with proxies throughout the scene, even large scale scenes can be rendered without any problems. We will automate the proxy creation workflow in a future release so that proxies will be created by the plugin during scene conversion. And we also plan to add further conversion functionalities and automation workflows to our Redshift support. And we will also extend the compatibility to more Cinema 4D versions and other host applications. To get a current list of all supported applications and Redshift builds, please check our website. Thanks for watching and happy rendering. Music